Good morning, everybody. Dr. Dan here with Beacon of Life Chiropractic, and I wanted to come to you this morning and talk about one of the biggest issues that I see when it comes to people taking care of their health, and that is the mental blocks that we have in our lives that were taught from society, from marketing, from media efforts in our country today that keep us from truly having the health that we need and that we deserve. And when it comes to your health, I always talk about what your greatest asset is. What's your number one asset that you have? And you know, we can talk about a lot of different things that are of value in our lives and the time that we have with our families and being debt free and, and all these things that are important. But the number one asset that we really have is our health and our ability to enjoy life, to be present with our families and to be able to produce value um, in our lives and, and in our families' lives and the people that we interact with on a daily basis. So if we don't have our health, none of the rest matters. It doesn't matter how much money's in the bank account, how many paid vacation days from work, um, you know, what kind of trips or vacations that we have lined up, you know, what kind of car we drive, restaurants that we eat at. Those things don't matter for the long term if we can't enjoy them and if we don't have our health to be able to have that quality of life. So when something's your greatest asset, you need to understand what it is and we need to understand how to take care of it. So this video here, I want to talk about the biggest mental blocks uh, when it comes to taking care of our greatest asset. And the top two that we talk about all the time, I have a lot of conversations around these two because it's very real. Let's just be honest, you know, time and money, very real things. The two biggest issues when it comes to people taking care of their health. And time, when it comes to time, you know, when something's your greatest asset and we understand and value our health for what it is and what it means to our lives and allows us to do in our lives, we're either going to make time for it now or we're going to be forced to make time for it later in a crisis scenario. And typically things are um, much more inflamed in terms of the emotion, the frustration, we have limited options. We're in pressure situations when we're in the crisis care, in the emergency room, in the urgent care, trying to make our healthcare decisions then. So when it comes to time, we say this, and that's procrastination is the thief of health. You know, we can put things off until they get so bad and then we're forced to deal with them. We cannot brush our teeth or teach our kids not to brush their teeth until they start rotten and we have toothaches and cavities and our teeth are falling out. Okay, now, now we'll start brushing it. Yeah, go ahead and brush your teeth now. We don't do that. But here's the thing, when it comes to our health, we live in this society that says, you know, we have all the time in the world. We'll heal that, or not heal that, we'll address that when we get around to it, okay? We put it on the back burner, and if I feel good, I'm fine. If it doesn't hurt, I'm good. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And we just keep charging forward, and typically what's involved with that are uh, many medications, many um, treatments to suppress and manage symptoms without getting to the root cause of the issue. So we put things off and we just get by on a day-to-day -day basis until we push ourselves into that crisis and then we're forced to take the time to address it. So um, you need to be able to invest your time and your money, two of your assets, into your greatest asset which is your health and your ability to produce because you need your health to be able to do that and be present with your family. So time and money, money's really along the same token. You know, we're either going to choose on a preventative basis now to invest into eating healthier foods, which can be expensive doing the shopping and getting the clean non-GMO, um, organic in a lot of situations, clean food or fuel that we put into our bodies that literally turns into living tissue that your body absorbs, assimilates, and turns into living tissue. We can either put junk and garbage into the body or we can put clean, wholesome food into the body. So that's a way to look at it and that is an investment. It's not cheap to be able to do that. Um, you know, we can take the time and invest the dollars to um, exercise, to take care of ourselves, go to the gym and that sort of thing when it comes to money. Um, we can choose to invest into preventative health care um, when it comes to allowing our body to be able to function the way that it was created to not just focus on the symptoms and managing them, but ask the question, why are we having that symptom? Get to the root cause of the symptom. Chiropractic care comes into play 
most of the time when it comes to the most common symptoms that people have, there's a root cause to that dysfunction. Chiropractic care helps to identify and address the root cause so the body can start to function better and then the symptom takes care of itself because you're getting to the root cause. So time and money, we can either choose to invest those things now or be forced to invest them later. Um, and, and that's really the health expense, or I would say the sick expense rather than the health investment. So you see the difference there? There's the reactive number one cause of bankruptcy, medical debt, sick debt, okay, that robs people of their health down the road uh, after, that, after that time period where we've put things on the back burner and now our quality of life isn't what we want it to be and we're being robbed of our finances or we can invest into our health now. We can choose to invest the time and the dollars into taking care of our health now and have the quality of life that we want to enjoy so that down the road we can have that uh, vibrant, abundant uh, energy and quality of life to do the things that we've always dreamed of doing. Um, you know, when it comes to the, the, the health care expense and the sick debt that I talked about, the number one cause of bankruptcy, studies show that anywhere between $400,000 and $600,000 per person is the amount of money that will be needed to handle health issues after uh, retirement and later in life. And when it comes to nursing homes, when it comes to assisted living because we don't have our health and we've lost our health over time, there's a waiting list of people to get in to nursing homes and uh, assisted living facilities because there's such a demand for it. And most times folks are not planning on doing that. They're not planning on needing the nursing home, but we wind up putting ourselves over time into that scenario if we haven't taken care of our health along the way. So when it comes to money, when it comes to wanting to be debt free and wanting to be good stewards of our finances, that's a very respectable thing, but you need to understand the consequence of not investing into your health now because it's going to rob us of finances later and quality of life later if we neglect things along the way. So when I talk about roadblocks mentally, these are the biggest two here. You know, we have time for the vacations, to watch our TV shows, to pay $7 for a coffee, and, and we invest time and money into things we choose to invest them into. So I would say it's not necessarily about the resources that we have, it's about being resourceful to invest into our greatest asset. So that's the biggest topic. The, the third thing here that's a roadblock for folks is kind of what I talked about earlier, that mentality that says, if it isn't broke, don't fix it. If I feel fine, I'm healthy. And if I hurt, then I'll do something about it. Maybe, maybe on down the road after I've been hurting and sick and having symptoms for a long time. And it's very, very much so that reactive form of care with uh, just reacting to symptoms and our health once it's left us. So the deal is this, is that we all know people that felt fine and had heart attacks and strokes and felt fine and are diagnosed with cancer. Heart disease and cancer are the top two causes of death in America. Five people out of six, that's the cause of death. Heart disease or cancer, okay? So headaches, back pain, numbness and tingling, they're not killing five people out of six in our country. It's things that we can't feel. It's chronic disease processes over time, over years, a lot of time, decades. When it comes to cancer and heart disease, it takes time that disease process didn't start the day before we were diagnosed with cancer. It didn't start the day before we had a heart attack. It happened over years of time. And so feeling good is important. I want you to feel well. It's very, very important. That's not lost on me. We need to feel great. But if we forget about how our body's functioning, meaning your heart, your digestive organs, your immune system, your kidneys, I couldn't tell you the last time that I felt my adrenal glands or my kidneys. I can't feel them, but I know that I need them to be functioning as best as they can, as long as possible, if I'm gonna be as healthy as I can. You understand what I'm saying? We can't feel our heart or our immune system or our thyroid gland, but I know that my thyroid gland needs to be functioning correctly if I'm gonna be as healthy as I can. So the third mental roadblock is basing our health just off of feeling good. We're missing the big picture when it comes to what's robbing people of their health and what is the health crisis when it comes down to it in America and for five people out of six it's cancer and heart disease. So if we're basing our health just on feeling good, 
we're missing the five out of six, okay? So that's number three, very important. It'll change your life if you can learn to think about your health and not only think about it, but act and invest into your health in, in this manner versus trying to conserve and protect as much time and money and you're just basing our health off of feeling good and neglecting the health investment that will change your life and the trajectory of your family's lives. But it starts up here with clearing these mental roadblocks. And then this one here, which is admirable, which I feel the same way and, and we act the same way um, when it comes to how we address our priorities and how we rank our priorities by putting our family before ourselves. And so there's a right way to do that and there's a wrong way to do that. In my opinion, when it comes to putting your family first, think about it this way. When they talk about the oxygen mask in the plane and it drops down, you gotta put your own oxygen mask on first, put your own on before you help other people because if you don't have a full cup, if your cup isn't full to give from, or at least have something in the tank to give from, you can't take care of your family. You can't enjoy the time together on vacations. You can't participate in your kids' activities and coach the sports and be at the events and, and be present with them. You can't give them your time, uh, your quality time, if we've neglected ourselves and put ourselves on the back. I urge you to consider these four roadblocks when it comes to how you're handling your health and your family's health. And we're here to serve you, we're here to um, help bring clarity to what it is to be healthy, what that really means, and not just to feel good, but to be able to take responsibility for your greatest asset. So Dr. Dan here with Beacon of Life Chiropractic. We look forward to serving you. Have a blessed day.